So in this video, we're going to be learning how to create a really simple polling application. You can see the way it works. What we do is we ask the user a question. They can choose from a list of answers. And what makes this polling application really nice is that we use jQuery. So whenever somebody clicks on the response, we send their response to the server. We record their vote and we display them the answers. So if I was to click on Greenland for what's the biggest island in the world, click on that. You can see it set my response off. It disabled the buttons so I can't click on them again. So I can't vote twice. And then what it did was it showed me the results. So most people have clicked on Greenland. So to make this as easy as possible, we're gonna be using Directus. Directus is gonna make it really easy to create our tables and it's gonna be really easy for us to add questions and answers to our polling application whenever we want. Because you can see here in the address bar, we're passing an ID parameter. So if I was to pass the ID equals two, we would get a completely different question and a completely different set of answers. So we're gonna be using Directus's PHP SDK. It's so much easier than using MySQL and PDO directly. And Directus gives us an admin area, which makes it really easy to create questions and answers. So in Directus, you can see I have two new tables. I have poll answers and polls. So if I click on polls, you can see we have one question. What's the biggest island in the world? And you can see I have the question and I have the answers. And then and in the poll answers table, we store the answers themselves. So what you need to do is create a table called polls and a table called poll answers. So we'll create the answer table first because it's the easiest. And when you create the table for both tables, you want to just disable the status column. So poll answers is the easiest table to create. So that table just has an answer column that's text. It has a numeric column called votes and it has another numeric column called poll. And that's how we link the answers table to the polls table. So just create those three columns and then you create your polls table. So in polls, what you want to do is you want to create two columns. So the first column is just the question that we want to ask. And the second column I've called ands, which is short for answer. And you can see it has a one to many relationship with poll answers. So to set that up, it's really easy. All you do is you would click create new column. You would give your column a name such as answers. And then you would scroll down, click on one to many, scroll down again and you wanna link the polls table to the poll answers table, and you wanna link the ID column in the polls table to the poll column in the poll answers table. Click save and you're good to go. So after we've created our two tables, what you wanna do is probably just put in uh, some example data. So I have one question here and I have three answers. And then we're ready to actually create our application. So here's our application. It's got a Bootstrap Studio template, I'm gonna include this in the description of the video, but you won't actually need it because I've exported it. So I'll include the HTML, the CSS, the JavaScript, and the template. So the first thing we have to do is include the Directus SDK. So we can download the Directus SDK from here. There's another video that shows how to use the Directus SDK. So you can see the card at the top of the video, and you can click on that to learn more about the SDK. But essentially, just copy this into your composer.json file. Then you run composer install, and you include this line at the top of your PHP script. So in our index page, you can see I've included the SDK. And then I've created an instance of it. And that's the variable we use to communicate with Directus. So we pass in our API key. We pass in the URL of our Directus instance. And we pass in the version of the API we want to use. So to get an API key, what I did was I went to user directory. And I created a special user called API. And we scroll down and you can see here we can generate an API token. So if I click generate new, it's going to generate me a new token. And that's the token that I paste in here. We could also generate an API key by sending a post request off to Directus as well. Next, what we want to do back on the homepage of Directus is go to admin settings, go to group permissions, and we want to create a new group. So you want to call your group API, that's what I've called it here. And you can see one user is in that group, and the user in the group is our API user that we created, we just click add user. Next, what we want to do is make sure the user has the correct permissions. So the API user for this application has to be able to view the poll answers and the polls table. So we tick those boxes to enable that. And we have to be able to edit the poll answers table because that's how we increase the number of votes. To make things even more secure, I blacklisted a couple of columns. So we can only write to the votes column, which is how we increase the number of votes. We can't change the answer. We can't change the associated question. So once you edit those, that'll be instantly saved and we'll be good to go. So back in our PHP script, what we do is we have this ID variable and that tells us which question we're viewing. So in this case, it's the question with the ID one. That's what is the world's biggest island. Next, we have a variable which is the sum of the votes, which we'll come back to in a minute. And here is where we use Directus's SDK to get the question. So we retrieve the question, store it in a variable called question, and we get the question using the get item method. So that method just takes the table, the question stored in, and the ID of the question, 
and when we run that it'll return lots of data about the question but we're only interested in the question itself so we use this arrow operator to retrieve the question out of the data and then what we do is we download the answers so we use direct as get items method we go to the poll answers table and we pass an array this time with the id of the poll so this just means we go to the answers table and we get all of the items where the poll column equals in this case one and then what we do is we just sum up the votes so we have our sum of votes variable and because there's multiple answers we loop through them and every time we have an answer Answer, we increase our sum of votes by the number of votes that answer had. So what that means is we add 3 plus 7 plus 1 which gives us 11 and that's how we know how big the Ireland bar should be compared to the Greenland bar compared to the Africa bar when we're showing the user how many people voted for each option. So next we just echo out the question, that's this up here. Once again we loop through the answers and we print them out so that's why we have three answers here. We just have a list group here. Uh, and we have a couple of special attributes. We have the answer ID stored and we have the answer vote stored. That just makes things easier when dealing with JavaScript. And then finally, we have the actual answer itself, which is what we can see here. So down here, we just have a click function that runs whenever we click on one of these items. So whenever I click on Ireland or I click on Greenland, it's going to run this code. And what it does is it sends a post request. And even though we're using Directus's PHP SDK, you could directly use Directus's API over HTTP because Directus's API is RESTful. That means here, if I wanted to view data, I would send a GET request. So if you wanted to add a new resource, you could send a PUT request. If you wanted to edit it, you could send a POST request. And if you wanted to delete one, you could send a DELETE request. So what we do is we send a POST request off to this special page. And what it does then is it just sets all the buttons to disabled. So we can't click on it multiple times to vote more than once. We display the blue bar behind the answers. And finally, what we do is we set the size of the bars. So what we do is we take the total number of votes an answer has got and we divide that by the sum of all the votes and multiply it by 100 to convert it to a percentage. So when we send our post request off, what we do is we send the answer ID so we know which answer received the vote. And then what we do is we go to this Ajax post vote page. We once again include the Directus SDK and we retrieve the answer ID out of the post request. We get the number of votes the answer received out of Directus. So to do that, we run get item, we pass poll answers as the table and answer ID is the key. So then what we do is we just echo out the number of votes just so we know the request is done. And then what we do is we update the answer, which in this case will be Ireland, with the number of votes it had previously plus one. And we do all this with the Directus SDK. So if I was to get rid of all the comments, I could easily make this whole polling application on 10 or 20 lines of code thanks to Directus. And that's really all there is to it. The rest of it is just CSS styling and things like that. So that's pretty much it for this video. All the code will be uploaded to GitHub and there'll be a link in the description. If you need any help getting used to Directus's SDK, check out the other Directus videos and you'll be up and running in no time. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Reddit. But that's it for this video and I'll see you next time.